Hey guys and welcome back to my channel. So today I'm going to be doing the do's and don'ts of eyeshadow application. So these are my personal tricks and tips. If you guys have any others please leave them down below um, so other people can read them and learn as well. As you guys can see I went a little bit like exaggerated with my don'ts and my do's. I mean of course most people don't usually do their don'ts like this but I wanted to exaggerate my point. Also if you find that I've said a tip that is in the don't list that you do and you like, then of course you do you boo. I'm literally just saying what I feel works best to achieve my personal preference of eyeshadow looks and application and things like that. So of course if you guys like this video make sure to give it a big thumbs up before you leave and subscribe down below to my channel as well. Otherwise guys let's get straight to the do's and don'ts of eyeshadow application. <laughs> Okay guys, so first do and don't is eye priming. So do prime your eyes. Um, if you don't prime your eyes and you have quite oily eyelids, then you can tend to get your eyeshadow creasing and it won't last as long during the day. Now you don't actually need to use eyeshadow primer to prime your lids. You can go in with concealer if you prefer. I love going in with the LA Girl Pro Conceal. It's affordable and it lasts a fair while. And I also love using either the Maybelline Fit Me Concealer or my Maybelline Instant Age Rewind Concealer. Each to their own. So you don't need anything too crazy expensive. However, I do love going in with my MAC Paint Pot. This is the Longwear Paint Pot. So this actually helps to keep my oils at bay. However, if you do have quite dry eyelids, then I don't recommend going in with this Longwear Paint Pot. I recommend using those two concealers I mentioned. What I also didn't mention about priming your eyes is that it allows the eyelid to be neutralized so the eyeshadows will pop and stand out a lot clearer. And it also gives the eyeshadow something to stick to. If you're just going in with your blank eyelid, it can tend to be quite dry or oily like I mentioned so the eyeshadows will grab on or like not blend into the eyelid as well just because there's nothing to adhere to or there's like patches of oils so it'll stick to those areas better and just look patchy. Plus I like to use this step to just go in and like carve out my brows if I haven't already just the bottoms of them to really neaten them up so they're nice and structured for the eye makeup look. So next is the transition. Don't go in with a dark eyeshadow straight off the bat and start whacking that through your crease. You're just going to end up getting a massive stark transition from eyeshadow to skin. Not the sexy sultry look that you were going for. Do use a transition shade. So a transition colour is something that's a couple shades darker than your natural skin tone. So for me that is the shade Beaches from this travel palette from Focalore. I like to use it through the crease on a fluffy blending brush. This is the 221 Luxe Soft Crease Brush from Zoeva. I like it because it's super fluffy so it creates a really soft airbrushed look to the skin. And as you can see, I lightly dabbed it into that colour, tapped off any excess so there wasn't anything sitting on the brush that could create fallout. So instead of just going in hand with so much pigment on your brush, I'm just taking a little bit at a time and softly building up that colour. You want to keep working that product into your skin till you have absolutely nothing left in your brush. And then I'll go dip it back into my palette and build up that shade till it's desired pigmentation. And as I'm blending this, literally only the very top of the bristles are touching my skin. I'm using very light pressure. Whereas before, I was really digging in that brush into my eye socket. So the transition shade doesn't necessarily need to be a brown. It can be a blue if that's your shade range you're going with. It starts from light blue and works down into the deeper colours. I'm using a neutral eye today, so I went in with brown. But like I said, it can be anything within the shade range you are using. Next, I'm going to talk about adding dimension and shape to your eye and your crease area. So there's actually a lot to know about adding dimension to the eye to really create that soft, smoky, sexy vibe. What I like to do with my brushes is, like you saw before, I took a really fluffy one. Now I'm going to take a little more of a denser brush and then take a shadow that's slightly deeper. Make sure you're lightly just dabbing it into that colour and then tapping off any excess that may be on the brush. And I'm just going to take that through my crease so this brush I'm taking is the 227 Soft Definer brush. So it's a little bit more dense in shape and able to just really snugly sit in that crease area. 
And what I'm doing is I'm slowly building up that colour. Like I said previously, you want to add a little bit at a time. Make sure that all that shadow is blended out off the brush before you dip your brush into your eyeshadow palette again. And as you can see, I'm holding the bottom of the brush. You want to hold the bottom because it means you're applying a lighter pressure to the top of the bristles into the eye solder, solder, socket. What you don't want to do is hold the top of the brush and try and blend out that eyeshadow. You're going to naturally apply too much pressure to your crease area and it won't look airbrushed and smoked out. It'll look quite stark and muddy and very, very harsh. And you'll be pushing down the bristles too much so you won't be able to get a soft, very precise application. It'll just be too dispersed and you haven't been able to blend any of that out. It's just been pushed up too high. For the do, I'm going to take another deeper brown shade something that's slightly darker than the previous two and grabbing a more defined brush so something with a bit more of a tip to it for me that's my precise shader brush from Zoeva and I'm just going to softly apply that again through my crease holding the bottom of the brush and as we add these deeper shades you guys can continue down the gradient even further if you want if you want it to be a really smooth gradient effect however for the purpose of this video not being too long, I'm just going to use three different browns today. Now a common thing I see in YouTube tutorials is that they don't go back and blend through the previous shades. I think that's such an important do with eyeshadow application because otherwise you're just going to have these stark lines through and you can lose some of the colours. So I just take that previous coral shade and again with that same soft definer brush, I'm just going to softly apply that through the crease area. And then taking our initial transition shade on that very fluffy brush we used at the beginning, I'm going to soften that line up a little bit more. A little tip also when keeping in mind with your blending brushes is you always want them to be nice and clean. Your blending brushes should always be clean, otherwise you're bringing previous product through the crease and it's going to muck up your eyeshadow because you're going to have different colours all through them. Okay, now getting on to the lid colour. What you don't want to do is go in with a glittery, shimmery shade on a very fluffy brush. The glitter in the product's going to go everywhere. It's not going to be precise and compact on the lid. It's just going to look all messy and it's not going to give you the flattering look that you were going for. What you do want to do is you want to take a more compact shader brush. I'm going in with my Morphe MB16 chisel shader brush. Okay, next is quite an important step. It is the brow bone highlight. So the most common mistake one can use when applying a brow bone highlight to the brow is applying a stark, shimmery, glittery shade to the brow and applying it all over the area, the whole brow bone. Now as you can see you completely lost the effect of the lift to the brow bone. However in saying that some shimmers do look really nice on the brow bone as a highlight if you're keeping them under the arch and not going ham like me all over the brow. So instead of using this stark intense uh, shimmery eyeshadow for the brow bone I'm going to take a matte white. This is White Lies from Makeup Geek. And applying that with that same pencil brush, I'm just going to apply this to the high points of the brow bone. I just find a matte white is a lot softer and subtle when giving the brow a highlight. Plus, it's a lot more wearable and it can clean up the eyeshadow if you feel like you've brought up your eyeshadow too far in your crease. And it can clean it up a little bit. Now I'm moving on to the lower lash line area. So a big don't is going in with a dark eyeshadow straight off the bat and then trying to blend that further and further down towards the bottom of your eye area. It's going to look quite raccoony and look like you've either been punched in the face or that you haven't been getting much sleep for the last century. So what I do recommend is going in with a transition shade. The same way we did to the lid area, we're going to apply to the bottom area and create that soft gradient effect. So layering on the eyeshadows. I like to go in with my pencil brush from Gloss just to create a bit more precise application to my eye area and making sure you're always connecting that eyeshadow up toward the outer corner area where that lid eyeshadow is so you're meeting them together so there's no stark gap in between those eyeshadow areas. And what I like to do is focus all the deep shades on the outer corner of my eye and then softly blend whatever's left on the brush towards the inner corner, not bringing it all the way in, keeping it about two thirds of the way across, 
to create that sexy almond shaped eye rather than it being quite rounded and raccoon like you want to get that kind of sexy soft almond shaped look my final tip for you guys when cleaning up the fallout on your face after you applied your eyeshadow is do not go in with a cream concealer or product after you've applied your eyeshadow especially if you applied powder beforehand the eyeshadows and powders is going to mix with that concealer and look streaky and smudged as you guys can see here all you need to do to really clean up any fallout or anything on your foundation is to just grab a light face powder and on a fluffy face brush all you need to do is just wipe that away just scoop that eyeshadow away and it'll be removed instantly plus with this trick it also helps you clean up your eyeshadow a little bit under the eyes and also brightens it so you look nice and fresh and awake thank you guys for watching i hope you enjoyed this video and found it helpful these are my eyeshadow do's and don'ts of course there are many others out there if you guys did like this video make sure to give it a big thumbs up before you leave and subscribe down to my channel below. Otherwise have an awesome day guys. Thank you for watching and I'll see you very soon. Mwah. Bye.